52 seconds of credits that start out completely silent. I haven't been this convinced that something was wrong with my TV since the f***ing Sopranos finale. Ground control to major tones. Use of an early boy song and a space montage cliche. I'm left to assume there's plenty of hand sanitizer on board, because why else would everyone be okay with potentially exposing themselves to the germs and microbes of other species that they might be vulnerable to? Haven't these guys seen War of the Worlds? Or heard about smallpox blankets? Also, why is the space station so attractive to all these alien races? How did Earth's orbit become ground zero for interstellar vagabonds? The Alpha Intergalactic Space Station has reached critical mass. Rutger Hauer Asian. Great Explorer Magellan, the Alpha Station will journey into the unknown. That's right, instead of establishing another place in the solar system for this baby to park, we're just gonna give it the old Star Trek treatment and send this carefully curated mishmash of diplomatic idealism floating off into the unknown. The space station had to be moved because it's too big and is posing a threat to Earth, but why did they shoot it off into deep space? Couldn't they just push it a little further outside the orbit? Keep a solid line of resources coming from Earth? The movie tells us these pearls are an incredible power source, so basically she's rubbing explosives on her face. Somehow feeding it to an alien puppy unlocks its fissile potential, but until then it's apparently Maybelline face wash. Super advanced alien race? Crack blurry mirrors. Okay, I'm all for world establishing and everything, but the lengths this movie goes to to show off what it thinks is bitchin' effects are positively Avatarian. Ah, so the pearls are harvested, and then the queen picks one with her microwave hand to give to the princess so she can feed it to her pet armadillo dragon, who can then replicasm out more pearls into the well of galaxy sauce that then sends pulsing luminescence through the sand arteries. Glad we got all that figured out. Wait, it's taken the princess this f***ing long to run to the city? They've already had time for the big debris to hit and settle on the ground, mobilize the military, and board the f***er. Ah. But this is just a broke-off portion of the space station. There has to be at least another entry point, and she could make an effort to find it, you know? Also, yes, there's a giant explosion headed their way, but instead of doing anything useful, this asshole stands at the window saying, Too bad, so sad, to the princess. Don't you think we should run through our assignment? Considering these two are professional partners, it's clear that Valerian went to the Harvey Weinstein School of Workplace Behavior. Scored a perfect 200 on my last memory test. Boast position. Discount holodeck. We both know you're quite a lady killer. So why do you lose interest in a girl as soon as you win her heart? Because I'm looking for the perfect woman. Great job, movie. You spent the last five minutes setting up this relationship that I am now completely 100% rooting against, so I hope that's what you intended. Put your hand back on the joystick. Dude, she's already turned you down, and now's not the time for another come on. Will you marry me? It's not that proposing outside a crowded, chaotic market before a mission, after you've been fighting all morning and trying to convince her she's in love with you, isn't romantic. It's just that it's dumb. Really, really dumb. In this crazy universe of CG alien races, there are only 12 identified species that use this market. We saw at least that many species in the opening welcome montage alone. Whoa. Welcome to Big Market! This multi-dimensional marketplace is exactly the kind of big idea that could have made this movie awesome. It's brilliant and gorgeous and clever and makes me wish I cared more about the story or characters enough for it to actually mean something. You have a dart gun that allows full control of another being? That's awesome! And it's also never used again in the entire film, despite many times it would have come in handy. If humans aren't supposed to access certain areas, why make these areas completely accessible to humans? Also, a species requirement gate that singles out humans and really serves no other purpose? That's specious and speciesist. Also, also, does no one get alerted when an unwanted human walks through? Shouldn't Paul Blorp Market Cop be rocket segueing him off the premises by now? Luke Besson saw all the unnecessary CGI creatures from the Star Wars prequels and said, I can top that I lost a lot of personnel getting this for you. Huh, I guess that means we'll eventually have a prequel that fleshes out that tale called Igon 1, a Valyrian story. You have 10 seconds to drop your guns. Why is Igon even bothering to keep these two alive if he's giving them this countdown? And if he's planning on killing them, wouldn't it make more sense to have one of his minions do it from behind? Sorry to interrupt this great deal, but I'm also here for a noble cause. Valerian's line here is a callback to the conversation between Igon and the Pearls. You know you're fighting for a noble cause. I know. And I'm fighting for a noble cause, too. Which he didn't hear, since he was skulking around outside the room. Can we all just admit these dimensional rules are BS? How did she know where the table was that easily? What if she had pushed the button while the box was located in the same place as something else? Why did Valerian have to be invisibilized, but she can just waltz in? How did the shiny blue people have guns without a converter box? Wouldn't Valerian's hand and gun always be visible? Forget it. Here's ten cents for it all, just so I can watch the rest of the scene without losing my mind. Wherever you are in the universe, I'll find you. And I will kill you. Good luck. Damn, good to know Taken is still so popular this far into the future that people are still quoting it. <laughs> Valerian survives this. Wait, if there's some sort of alert for Valerian, why is nobody pursuing him in this dimension? Like right now. They know where he is, and there are guards on this side too. The f*** are all these assholes sent on this mission for? I understand the one dude makes the alien guard do the alien Macarena. But why are there several other minions if this mission just involved Valerian and Laureline? 
Come on, let's go, go! Does this mean that the guard just jumped off his perch as the bus sped away? Can we have a moment of silence for the random alien guard who just showed up for work to do his job and ended up sunk in place as some human jumped him to his death? This monster was easily able to catch up to the transport and rip off the roof, and is also bulletproof. But apparently it needed a short break for proper menacing before killing fools, allowing Valerian to make their escape. Major Valerian, you're running nearly 20 minutes late. F you with this year late bullsh** movie. Why would there be any super specific time frame for them to complete this mission? And even if there were one, General Hancock didn't tell them about it in their pre-mission call. You can tell me what you're doing 17 light years from your rendezvous. Yeah. Well, if they're only 20 minutes away, does this matter all that much? They can apparently travel much faster than the speed of light. So why don't we get you a nice treatment so you can get your mojo back? Some high-grade uranium and you'll be good as new. Laureline knows absolutely nothing about this creature except that it can convert stuff, but immediately sticks it into this futuristic dishwasher, then pieces out without considering how it will be affected. I'm gonna ask for 10 days leave right now and I'm gonna take you to the most beautiful beach in the whole universe. Look, I don't hate Dane DeHaan. I just hate him in this movie. It's an awful casting choice. You could literally throw a dart at a dartboard and cast it better. Ezra Miller, Miles Teller, Tom Holland, Nicholas Holt. You could have even thrown Christopher Plummer in there at the last second and it would have worked out better than this. Welcome to Alpha, the city of a thousand planets. Roll credits. Alex, can you update us? The Alpha station has grown 7% this year. And since it left the terrestrial orbit, it has traveled almost 700 million miles. Jeez, thanks, expositional Alexa. Seriously, do Valerian and Laureline need any of this information? Why do they need a full Wikipedia entry read to them about a place they've presumably been many times before? 3,236 species from the four corners of the universe live on board. And we are going to try and show you a CG rendering of every single one in the next 90 minutes. To the east of them, the large colony of Omelites. They control information technology, finance, and banking. Man, I'm really starting to think Alpha is an extremely racist society. They keep the aliens that are good at finance and banking in a separate f***ing part of the city. This is what's known as a walk and don't talk. Its formal name is the Anti-Sorkin. Declassify. And make sure and do that in full view of all these people that are in the immediate vicinity. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Laureline would be excellent at cinema sins. You're looking a lot better. Did she leave that f***er in there this whole time? Jesus, I thought the mule converter had it bad when it was confined to that tiny box. I don't think that's a very good idea. For your personal security, why don't you let Agent Laurel Lane look after the little guy? Sure, their refusal to hand over the converter is integral to the plot, but how do these two get to be such dicks around the people who outrank them? Before we go, we would like to give you some info for free. Movie needs so much exposition, it literally invented an alien species that specializes in it. Alex, I need to know the attacker's identity. Everyone! Please evacuate. Evacuate? They don't even know what the hell the nature of the threat is, right? Isn't now the time to have all the intelligence personnel on hand? And the attack hasn't even come close to this room, so where the f*** are they planning to go? Sir, the door's locked. We can't get out. Jesus Christ, how is this guy trusted with any job here? He literally punched a button twice and gave up. Wait, this was a gathering of the heads of all the delegations on Alpha. I know the pearls locked the doors, but you're telling me there's no more security? Or at least backups that can find their way into this room? This breathing device comes equipped with its own laser spider. What a very specific piece of technology you just happen to have immediately available for this very instance. What was that? The pearls. They took the commander. There's no way for Valerian to know this since he was covered in goo during the abduction of the commander. This power run is certainly visually stunning, but didn't we see earlier that all these communities were spread out over the entirety of this giant space station? How are they now lined up in a row? Also, how exactly does putting on this helmet all of a sudden make not so great Dane some kind of spacesuit Superman? 81, you're sure? Sorry, my mistake. It was number 18. Har har movie, but how would Laureline even make this mistake? She was directing him from above, so the door number shouldn't matter. And why the would the number be upside down anyway? Also, considering Valerian punctured the wall here, whatever was adjacent to that corridor or in the path that he carved in the station is now subjected to the cold vacuum of space. Seriously, there are no other ships after these assholes? The entire government knows exactly where they are. Valerian, be careful. Reel them in before I lose you. Valerian, you need to go faster. I mean, Laureline has been a capable badass up to this point, but now she's just dispensing unhelpful motherly advice? How about trying to figure out where they're going? It's our mission that doesn't make sense, sir. Well, at least I'm not the only one who thinks so. I've got a bad feeling about this idea. In case you didn't realize how Star Warsy this movie was trying to be, it's now literally lifting lines from the original trilogy. Okay, fine, the Bromosaur only gets aggressive when you steal his jellyfish, but why are all of them now upset? This unnecessary underwater undertaking reminds me that this movie is at least 20 minutes longer than it needs to be. Show it images of Valerian, and it will show you what it has seen. So this random jellyfish located in a sewer on Alpha can tell you where anyone is in the universe? If so, how are they not one of the most 
most valuable commodities in the entire city. Shouldn't everyone be hunting these things like they're hunting the converter? Anything else I should know before I voluntarily stick my head on his mouth? Holy sh** movie, you got a PG-13 rating, so you could definitely get away with Cara Delevingne saying up its ass, as she clearly does here. This is the worst unnecessary dub since Sigourney Weaver in Galaxy Quest. Laureline's memory of Valerian is conveniently confined only to his scenes in this movie. These assholes paid a lot of money to Bob to capture this magical fucking jellyfish, but it's allowed to just wander off back into the water without anyone trying to stop it. You need a detailed map? How much longer are we gonna have to spend with these Dobby the House Gungan wannabes? Why must every sci-fi movie find a way to 3PO us to death? She stole a vehicle. She headed into the red zone. And we lost track of her. And there's not a lot left in the budget to show you, so I'm just gonna tell you about it and let the audience imagine it on their own. Stay with me, Valerian. Hero is dead, but not really, and the rescuer says some variation of stay with me cliche. Also, if his condition was this dire, how the hell is Valerian still alive? Since he crashed, Sergeant Enchantress got arrested, escaped custody, found the little threesome guys, went down to meet Captain Bob, went on an excursion to find the jellyfish, stuck her head up the jellyfish's magical asshole, found a ship, then made it all the way over to the red zone. Pretty butterfly. Trained agent Laureline decides to touch the wildlife in a strange new world. She's got a bright future in the next Alien movie, I tells you. Sorry, I'm inedible. Damn, Dom. Some random fisher of men snags you and you flat out murder him? Are we sure Valerian disease here isn't actually the villain in this movie? This sign is supposed to be hilariously misspelled, but why is it in English at all? These aliens speak alien. We got the refugees all stars, Hmm, this 28th century street party is playing a Wyclef Jean song from 1997. I guess Luc Besson wanted to revisit the last year that he directed a good movie. Hey, cowboy! You come to the right spot. This best damn club on the whole space station. One day, you're a janitor who sneaks onto a Gattaca space mission. And the next thing you know, you're just some alien pimp. Them's the brakes, kids. So Jolly is sole proprietor, pimp, bartender, and organ player in this joint. The last round of layoffs must have been rough. Look, I love a weird-ass Rihanna striptease as much as the next guy, but movie has time for this? Look, Bobo, I lost my partner. I feel like a good 87% of this movie is one partner trying to rescue the other partner, and the rest is filled with an extremely flimsy-ass story. I'll get you an ID pass, you have my word. Dude, she can literally look like anyone she wants. Why would she ever need an ID pass? Come to think of it, how is she not already free and doing what she wants? She's basically all the best powers of Mystique and Jean Grey combined. Why is her race relegated to prostitutional parlor tricks when they could easily be running the world? Hey, 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 what are you doing? I told you I needed rehearsals. This is a heavy row. Much better. You're doing good. Forget the silly walk you got going on. You're having a full volume conversation within five feet of these extra cholesterols. How do they not hear this? We've picked up the major trail again. Just now? Alex was able to pick Valerian's signal up ages ago when he made it to the surface outside Paradise Alley. How did these fuckwads run an entire delegation? So how did you come to lose your partner? Because I'm stupid. What do you mean? All I do is flirt and joke. Actually, no. Valerian was working on his spaceship and was literally in the middle of warning Laureline about the butterflies when she was captured. The f*** are these assholes doing? You had one job, chestplate. I mean, I don't expect these guards to have a chance against Valerian, but this dumb bastard literally walks into a spear. How is this alien race so fearsome if Valerian can take out like 25 of them this easily? <laughs> Trust me on this. Or you could just quickly tell her you're making a run for the giant convenient hole in the middle of the room. Information is your friend. Also, why would an opening even be there? What kind of throne room has a graded disposal system installed right in the middle of the red carpet? How is nobody tripping over it or falling into it during the food assembly line before? Declassify. The war against Azenkorn led to the destruction of Planet Mule. As if having these classified files on a giant screen in full view of the people in the room weren't enough, the general decides to read it aloud so that the myopic staff can get the information too. Movie wants us to believe that the converter has been safely dangling from Laureline's belt this entire time, despite her being abducted by an alien race that would surely have confiscated it, right? I've been injured during the fight. Tell me what to do. There's nothing you can do. The death of Bubble is the bullshittiest bullshittitude in the already bullshit show of a movie. First, you must have been injured in the fight. How? Not only did you elastigirl yourself around any incoming attacks, you're basically made a slime. So how do you even get injured anyway? Second, you sustained a life-ending injury, and you aren't even aware of it until seconds before you die? Even though we just saw you charging at full tilt 60 seconds ago? Third, what purpose does this death even serve to the story? Is it supposed to inspire Valerian? Was there a moment of sacrifice I missed? Some brilliant wisdom that was passed on? And finally, we barely even knew you. You were basically a fetish fest, a costume, and then some comic relief. I've seen side characters on sitcoms with more character development than you. Take good care of it. Did the evil alien race with all the warriors just give up on trying to find the three individuals that wiped out their emperor and most of the guards? They know exactly where they escaped, right? The princess. She's guiding me. If Princess Leho has been inside Valerian and guiding him this entire time, could she not have guided him away from being such a douche at the beginning of the movie? Jesus, why didn't they put the portal a little closer to the emperor? Is there a reason they now need to run a 5k to get over there? Leho and Mina chose you to be the guardian of her soul. Damn, it sure was lucky she chose a badass like Valerian to guard her soul instead of, like, Fred in accounting. Non-consensual soul peeping. 
What exactly happened? Our planet was a true paradise on which we lived in harmony with the elements. Well, I guess now that we're done with Valerian and the movie of a thousand side quests, it's back to more explaining things again. Sure, that's a giant spaceship, but enough to take out an entire planet like that? Don't you need like some sort of star of death to do that? And a good five minutes or so of flipping switches and charging things up? And a purposely unprotected exhaust port? Also, what the hell? The first scene of the movie showed the destruction of the planet taking long enough for the important pearls to get together and for the princess to make it all the way back to the city. But the recap shows it being insta-death? How'd the surviving pearls even get off the planet? A mule converter. And a pearl. The only one Suri managed to salvage. Okay, fine, she happened to grab a pearl, but how exactly is one of those converter creatures still around? If they were indigenous to Mule, and that planet went full Alderaan, where did the porcupine come from? You were on board. Yes. Yes, I was on board. Jesus, I've seen Scooby-Doo endings that were more surprising and suspenseful. Just get this shit over with. We lost 500,000 soldiers in a day. Perhaps you knew their planet was inhabited, and you sacrificed it. Well, yeah. I mean, it sucked for the pearls, but the commander had lost half a million people in a fucking day. What the fuck else is he supposed to do? I know he's an asshole, but I gotta side with Commander Clive on this one. I'm giving them back the converter. <laughs> no, I'm a soldier. I play by the rules. Do you? For the entire movie, you've ignored orders and done whatever you want. But I guess plot's got a plot sometimes. All right, give it to him. Valerian once again proves that the power of space boners is greater than the power of gainful employment. Maybe it's just me, but wouldn't you do the first replication over like a basket or something, and then use one of those pearls to do the one where they all fall into the mystery goo? What happens if you accidentally drop it, or don't catch one as they fall? Don't you want to save one, you know, just in case? I know the pearls are peaceful, but come on. They're walking out to meet a group of heavily armed humans, a species they haven't had great experiences with, by the way. Why didn't they bring along a couple of those destabilizing blue goo guns? Contact with the enemy. Give me a physical description. And do it all slow and sexy-like, and definitely use that gruff voice. We're picking up a signal from the 2005 Destiny module. Damn it, movie. Even if they had the ability to interact with such ancient technology, there's no way they would be actively searching for those signals. Microsoft can barely keep their Xboxes backwards compatible, and that's within the same decade. Wakey, wakey. Man, that must have been some punch, considering he's been out cold for the last 15 minutes. Do you confirm those orders? Annihilate them all. Setting aside the psychopathy it would take to decide to eliminate every single alien and human on board to avoid humiliation, why does he even need to? The other officer simply asked him what to do and gave no indication he wouldn't listen. For such sleek, ruthless annihilation machines, these K-Trons seem to have shit for armor. Considering we heard earlier that this ship was located at the very center of this giant space station, I hesitate to think about all the damage it just did, and thousands of lives lost blasting out from the middle in that short amount of time. We saw our Val Pal take out all the K-Trons near the Pearl ship, but how exactly did they win the battle in the control room? Last I saw, it looked pretty grim in here. Even if they got the countdown stopped, that doesn't mean it would deactivate the K-Trons, right? Get me down from here, you children! Valerian and Laureline had time during this firefight to wrap and hang the commander from this location, which is all the way over on the other side of this compartment that should now be directly exposed to space. Happy birthday. Movie seriously wants us to believe that all this happened in the course of one day. He spent a day in a woman's body. Did he not learn anything? No, he didn't. A woman spent a day in his body. I see your point, but you are still the opposite of right. From the director of Lucy. He hit it. In one place he knew he could hide something, his ass. Come on, touch it. Huh? Come on, you need human contact. Touch it. I will not touch it. We're supposed to mingle with tourists, aren't we? What do you expect us to wear, a panda suit? Panda. He slimed me. Valerian, answer me. Major, respond. Can you hear me, Major Tom? But first of all, why are you attacking us? Because you have what we need. But you say he's just a friend. Tell me, what's your name? Bubble. Open your eyes. Federal agent on duty. I am an FBI agent. Ah, whoa, what's happening? Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? What do I mean by who am I? Hey, listen. I hear 